All right, well, good morning. Happy Wednesday, everybody. This is PrepperCon Radio, again, as usual, every Wednesday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. in the Rocky Mountains of gorgeousness. The weather's beautiful outside. It is, and again, yet we are here yet again. We've got our good friend Shane here with me, as always, <laughs> and you know me, I'm Scott. If you want to join in the conversation, you can hop on at 801-254-5855 is our, our phone line. Um, we've got a special guest. We're going to be talking all things everyday carry knives today. Knives and tools. And uh, knives. going into survival knives as well. So yes. bushcraft, survival. And what I wanted to have, this is uh, this is Ben Peterson with Blade HQ. Good morning. What is up, guys? Oh, dude, we're so happy to have you here. Yeah, absolutely. He's, for those of you listening in, because you can't see anything, he has a plethora, I would say. A, Pl- a, a nice plethora. plethora of <laughs> knives. We, we uh, probably have about out. 20 knives on the table. Yeah, at least. We'll, we'll, get you some, we'll get you some nice gnat sounds there in the microphone. There you go. There you go. Nice out the front knife. We're going to be talking about those a little bit, too. Uh, and that may be otherwise known as a switchblade. To those of you who are don't know what an OTF or out the front knife, so uh, we wanted to have Ben on today because uh, <clears throat> I, I think one of the most important things you can have with you every day is a good pocket knife, whether it be a like a Swiss Army type folder, folder or a even a fixed blade. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. So how do you choose? There are so many knives out there that are available. How do you choose what's right for you? Obviously, price has uh, a, a big part of it, but uh, that's what we re- I really want to get into. Um, and you know, I find that uh, you know because I always carry a knife on me, I get people asking me, "Hey, what's your what's what's your carrying, and what kind of knife is it, and you know what should I get?" Um, and so I love giving that kind of advice, but I'd rather have the professionals here giving that advice because I know that my my opinion can be uh, somewhat slanted, right, Scott? <laughs> <laughs> never, no, never, no, no, no. ever, always is the appropriate term, yes. <laughs> and I'm impressed. We even have a Cub Scout BSA knife. You bet, man. I'm impressed. This I, is. I wanted to bring in kind of the gamut. Uh, I mean, this is actually, I found it in my <laughs> dad's garage. Uh, what it is, it's a Cub Scout. I believe it's a case knife, kind of your traditional gentleman's folder. You know, about 50 years ago, this was, this was the kind of knife, mm-hmm. in-pocket sort of not, pocket knife that everyone was carrying. And since then, it's kind of adapted uh, to the point where you can have a- any sort of knife. Um, you got folding knives. You got ni- in, in fact, I brought a knife in today that it doesn't uh, it doesn't have any screws in it. You take it apart via a little wheel on the back. It's called a no tool take apart uh, home front knife from CRKT. Just one knife of the year at Blade Show uh, 2016 in Atlanta. That's a convention out in Atlanta where all the knife makers get together. So I guess my point there is knife technology has come a long way. Knife steels have come a long way in the last 50 years. And it's fun to be in the industry seeing this stuff happen kind of in real time. Yeah, absolutely. And I definitely want to talk about blade steels. I want to talk about different shapes and types of blades and and all that kind of stuff. But let's let's talk a little bit about Blade HQ right off the bat so we don't forget to do that at the end. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you come from, what's your background, all that fun stuff. Yeah, definitely. So Blade HQ is an online retailer. We're located right here locally in Lehigh, Utah, uh, just south of Lehigh Roller Mills off I-15. We've been around about 13 years, 12, 13 years, and we sell primarily on the Internet. We do have a storefront uh, in our store so you can purchase there, walk in and handle the knives. But, uh, yeah, we, we basically sell knives anywhere from about $15 to $10,000 knives, mm-hmm. custom mm-hmm. knives with mammoth tooth inlays and, and things like that. Just so for the collector as well as absolutely. the practical prepper like like us. Yep, absolutely. And it's a, it's a fun industry. It's a small kind of homegrown family industry, and I get a kick out of it. I've been in it for about five years. Prior to this, I was working at Columbia River Knife and Tool up mm-hmm. in the Portland area. Great and company. prior to that, I was at Blade HQ as well. So kind of been poking around this industry for about five years, having a really good time. I enjoy it. Can't yeah. seem to leave it. So. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and you won't be able to leave the store either when you go in the store. <laughs> so so let me tell you what I do. I, I go online to bladehq.com. I look at the different knives that, that catch my attention depending on what I'm looking for. And then I walk in the store and I ask to see these knives and hold them in my hand. And... That's why I love about Blade HQ being here local. Um, it is a fantastic site, and if you only get to shop online, this is really the best 
place to shop. And I, I don't mean this to sound like an infomercial. I just love this site. I love this company. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to have Ben on with us today so that you guys out there can feel empowered to know where to go to find the right tool for you. Because a knife really is a tool. And I think it's extremely important for everyone to have one in there. You women in your purse, guys in your pocket, or in your, your professional bag, your business bag, to have that kind of tool with you. And in addition to knives, you guys also have multi-tools, flashlights, uh, survival supplies, packs. Mm -hmm. So not just knives. Yeah, it's very it, – looking at their website is very diverse. You can see a ton of different things there. Um, and it's funny, like jumping back on, the, on knives, it's, as a kid, uh, my grandpa had an old – gentleman's knife uh, mm -hmm. old timer an old probably. timer yeah. is what it was and I just remember as a kid every time he'd pull that out he'd, he'd use that for everything all the mm -hmm. time he's always using his knife and I'm like man I can't wait till I grow up and I can actually carry a knife because yeah. my dad would let me carry my Cub Scout knife that I had that's the same one that's on the table mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, he's like you can take it camping you can take it to scouts other than that you're not going to have it at home can't take it to school and you all know, that couldn't take it to school still can't take it to school you know Yeah. there's so many rules and regulations but you know never used it for anything other than Cutting paper, cutting wood, you mm -hmm. know, opening bottles. It's such a practical pocket piece. You know, we talk about EDC or everyday carry. You know, I carry, right now I carry a Kershaw. I love it. I don't have a need for pliers, but this one mm -hmm. has screwdrivers yeah. sets. You know, I've got a socket set with four different heads on my screwdrivers, and then I've got a bottle opener, and, of course, my fun blade, right? And, and that's what I love about... Uh, Blade HQ and being able to shop online is you can really figure out what you need. Like for me, I, I carry a, a a nice. It's just a three inch blade. It's a Spider Co. And then I also carry a multi tool on me because I use pliers and I can use these other tools. Whereas you know some of you probably will never uh, need or may never need uh, you know pliers. But let me point this out: uh, once you have that tool on you, whether it's a small knife or a multi tool like a Swiss tool, which is like what I prefer. You will find so many uses for it. Oh, yeah. Uh, it just It's like uh, when you buy a certain car, <clears throat> you then r instantly begin to notice all the other cars that are just like yours on the road. So once you start to use a knife or have one in your pocket, you're going to realize, man, how did I get along with an, without having a knife before? And, and like you were saying, the old timers, uh, everybody used to have a, a knife in their pocket. It yep. was common sense. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think there's kind of a resurgence in that, too. You look at um, what Instagram has done for showing people what's in your pockets. Like mm -hmm. If you're familiar with the hashtag pocket dump, hashtag pocket dump on Instagram mm -hmm. is yep. huge. And you get to see what people are carrying. And a lot of people carry knives. And I think some of these folks that may not be quite into the prepper scene or the, the preparedness scene, they are seeing these pocket dumps and going, hey, maybe a pocket knife is useful for mm -hmm. kind of my everyday tasks. I use mine all the time. In fact, I, I use the edge of mine, the back edge of my, my pocket knives a lot of times to screw in uh, tripod heads. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of video and film work. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's a lot of uses for them. I think they're they're really fun. And they're, they're a good conversation piece. I, uh, Absolutely. I'm, I'm like that weirdo in the store. Like if I see a <laughs> pocket clip hanging out, it's like, hey, um, do you carry a knife? Yeah. Uh, yeah. What knife are you carrying? I'm, I'm kind of a creeper like that, but I, I get a real <laughs> kick out of it. It's, it's well, really interesting to me. Well, once you get to, to spending time on Blade HQ and, and knowing the different knives and, and like you say, it's seeing the pocket clip. So the pocket clip uh, is is what clips it to the inside of your pocket. Your, your The knife is on the inside of your pocket. The clip clips around the outside of your pocket. And you can once you get to know, you can say, oh, I know he's carrying this brand or that brand. And then, like you say, it's a conversation piece. But... Uh, for, for me, I grew up also having a Boy Scout knife. Uh, I got myself a nice champ, Swiss champ, when I was early teens. Carried that thing with me everywhere. Took it on planes. I took it on my mission with me. They ended up calling me MacGyver because I would always be using it. <laughs> and I, Or for those of you that didn't understand it, MacGyver. MacGyver. MacGyver in Spanish, you know, with the Spanish accent. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is, is like, I, for me, it was the same. I mean, I started off with my Cub Scout knife. And then when I became a Boy Scout, I was like, Mom, I need a Boy Scout knife. And she's like, no, you, your knife is fine. I'm like, no, Mom, I need a Boy Scout knife. I'm not a Cub Scout anymore. <laughs> and so I got a hand-me-down knife from my uncle. And this is, it, to me, it was this was the funniest, dumbest knife I've ever had. Mm -hmm. Because it had a fold-out fork and a fold-out knife on the outside. Right, yep. And so it was, like, totally mm -hmm. impractical, impractical as, a, as a knife. 
if, in every way because you couldn't hold it correctly because mm-hmm. you had – and it wasn't just a spoon. It was like a serving spoon, huge Like spoon. a soup spoon. Almost, yeah. Yes. No, it, it was just huge. I'm like, am I dishing out food for everybody or like what the heck? And it had you, – you couldn't fit it in your pocket. It was so wide. Um, but it was just – I loved, hated that knife. Mm-hmm. And I was so excited when I was finally able – I saved up enough money and I got a Spyderco knife. I was about 14, and I was like, yes! My buddy was, like, huge into Spyderco. He's like, dude, you got to get one of these knives. you got to get one of these. And he had, like, mm-hmm. six by the time I finally got one. Um, I was spending all my, my lawnmower money on food and, he's you know, Taco Bell and all that <laughs> fun stuff. And he's all, I got another knife. I got another tool. I got a crossbow. And I'm like, I should probably invest in some cool stuff instead of food. Yeah, and w- once you start uh, shopping around for knives and, and actually uh, appreciating the value of a good knife, then you really start to get into collecting wanting to collect the different knives. Uh, I'm still very practical. I'm not much of a collector, but I believe in redundancy and having duplicates of each. So having just one knife isn't good enough for me because what if that were, if I were to mistreat that and it were to break or to lose it or something like that or get stolen, I need to have a backup. Absolutely. And I, I think that it's funny because one of the things about my knife, I, I picked this up on my way to SHOT Show a couple years ago, um, and I, I love this knife. It's been the most versatile knife I've ever owned. I've got, you know, I've got um, some pliers. I've got a Leatherman. And, mm-hmm. But I hate carrying it because you've got to pretty much carry it on a belt. I love these yep. this knife because it's a clip knife. I can just slide it in my pocket, pull it out when I need it. Um, it's not a, uh, it's it's not so big that it's causing any problems. It's nice. It's, it's slim line. But uh, it's funny because as soon as I saw them being sold here, I went and picked up another one. Mm-hmm. And uh, I actually lost the one I bought mm-hmm. as my backup because I put my original, my, my regular one in a box when we were moving, and I pulled my backup out and put it in my pocket. And then I went camping a few weeks ago, and I lost that knife. It got clipped on something, and I lost it right mm-hmm. out of my pocket. Mm-hmm. Never found it again. And I'm like, oh. But then you had your backup. But I had my backup. As soon as I got yep. in the car, I'm like, there's my other one. Yep. You know, and it's so good. You always, you always want to have, in my opinion, you always want to have three or four knives. Like, I've. In my car right now, I've probably got six different knives. Well, five different knives because I just pulled mm-hmm. one out. I've got my my uh, cold steel kukri, which I love. It's great for when I'm camping and stuff. It's which is one of his doomsday stuff. weapons as well. well. I wouldn't really call it my doomsday weapon, but uh, it is a good self defense tool if it comes down to it. If you know how to use it, mm-hmm. otherwise you just it's, you might as well be swinging a stick. And as we're coming up on on our first break, when we come back, I'd like to talk about okay, how is best to choose. Uh, a good pocket knife and then uh, after the second break I want to talk about or I would like to talk about survival knives bushcraft knives so forth because I believe everybody should have in their bug out bag whatever bag you want to call it have an everyday carry knife on you and then have a nice quality fixed blade that you can really do some serious work with that a, that a pocket knife uh, is not going to hold up to you know that type of uh, this type, different types of, of heavy duty work exactly because not all knives have the same purpose. And I think that's what most people forget. Um, they're like, oh, go to pocket knife. I'm good. Well, no, nah, you're not. Yeah. You, there's different types of tools for different types of projects. Like this little uh, spider co. it's got like a, a one and a half inch, maybe two inch blade. And it's kind of hard to hold. It's, yep. it's like a two finger, three finger knife or four. Uh, but it's a very lightweight, small knife that you could easily keep in your pocket. That's not going to be intrusive on anything. And... Uh, the cool thing about that one too is it's uh, it's got a steel on it that won't rust. I've taken it okay. scuba diving; it's stellar. So, awesome. well, we're we're hitting a break here. We want to remind everybody, Preppercon Radio is actually sponsored by Survival Medical. These guys are the only first aid kit designed for long term storage. Check them out: survival medical dot com. It's what I carry. I love them. I keep a couple packs in my car, and uh, hopefully, I don't ever have to use them. But they're there when I need them. Survival Medical, survival-medical dot com. Thanks for sponsoring the show. Hey guys, thanks for listening. We'll be right back after a break and a moment from our sponsors. Hi, it's Sherilyn Eager with the Liberty. Hey everybody, welcome back to Preppercon Radio, sponsored by our good friends over at survival-medical dot com. If you didn't check them out on the break, check them out now while we're talking. Uh, we're going to jump into a conversation, a fun conversation on how to choose the right knife to carry. Kind of your EDC, which is everyday carry. Everyone has different things they like or dislike in life. I mean, some people are in the shoes and they, they only wear loafers, you know. Some people, you know, what, mm-hmm. I don't, women in their high heels, I don't understand it because I don't, I don't want to have ergonomic problems and back problems later in life. But um, shoes are important. Knives are just as important as 
the tool that fits you is what you want to find. Um, what are you using it for? What are you going to be using it for? What do you envision yourself using it for? And what kind of um, emergencies might it be helpful for? Like I mentioned my grandpa, he, he always carries his old timer. He still does. Um, and I remember watching him clean out his fingernails, you know, in church. You just clean it out on I do that. your nails with yep. a little timer. And I mentioned my grandpa. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and we got a <laughs> video playback on the background. Snapchat, guys. Snap- you okay, got right. to snap this stuff, right? So, and and, and it was funny because I always used to, like, sit there in church and lean over and, like, Grandpa, can I play with your knife? And he's like, no. <laughs> and I'd see it. My grandma would hand him some, like, cloth to cut or something. Like, just random, like, hey, oh, I need your knife. Hey, oh, I need your knife. Mm-hmm. You know, she didn't have an everyday carry. She had an everyday spouse that was always around that mm-hmm. she could get the knife from. And, and I'm kind of looked at the same way in my family. It's like my wife's always like, oh, do you have your knife? Well, yes, yes, I do. Well, of course I do. And last night I failed miserably. Uh-oh. I uh, I switched from pants to shorts, and I was in a hurry, and I forgot to load all my pockets. Mm-hmm. And we're setting up for my, my brother-in-law is getting married. I'm setting up the church, the little chapel, not the chapel, the, the overflow area. Mm-hmm. And we're setting up all the decorations. And they're like, oh, do you have a screwdriver? I'm like, yes. I, uh, I don't I have a screwdriver. Dang it. <laughs> and then I'm like trying to work all these different screws without a screwdriver. I'm like, this is mm-hmm. this is stupid. Why did I forget my knife? Yeah, absolutely. And um, with all these all these knives splayed out here on the table, you know, some are very small and some are very large. So what is the right size for you? Uh, what's And there are different types of steels. The handles are made of different materials. Uh, there are so many different ones to choose, even small fixed blade ones, which uh, could be used for everyday carry as well. So, Ben, w- why don't you guide us through your process of choosing a knife for a particular person or or use or what what's whatever what have you yeah i mean the first thing i ask somebody when they say hey what knife should i buy i say how are you going to use it mm-hmm. and some folks are big knife guys and in fact both the guys here in the studio both scott and shane are big holding big knives big old fat knives with four inch <laughs> blades so these are folding knives with four inch blades i prefer a three inch blade under three inch blade it's just for your very, everyday carry for everyday carry mm-hmm. very unobtrusive but how cruel is it to have this four inch blade knife and pull it out of your pocket, and I did that once, and I have I have some bench made. I've got a nice four inch bench made, and uh, and I was carrying that once, and I pulled it out, and I'm using it, and the person who I was with said, you know, I wasn't surprised that you had a pocket knife. I was just surprised at how big it was. Yeah. So a four inch blade can be considered a pretty big knife. I, I think a four inch blade is really big. Um, for me personally, I, I like just under three inches, about two inches. Most of my everyday carry knives are right in that range. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the first thing I ask somebody is, what are you going to use it for? If you're working on a farm or you're kind of in, in manual labor, blue collar stuff, mm-hmm. you might carry a bigger blade because you're, you're probably going to need it. That's what you need it for. Uh, for me, I work in an office. I use my knives to open letters. And, and boxes. And, and boxes yeah. and things like that. So that's the first thing is how big do you want it? And then how much do you want to spend? I mean, you can you can blow two or 300 bucks on a knife like that. Yep. And... Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, I'm more budget conscious. I typically carry a sixty to seventy dollar knife. For some folks, that's going to be really expensive. Yeah. For others, it's going to be yeah, reasonable. Yeah. Um, but you get what you pay for with this stuff. Uh, we were we were talking prior to the show about how Kershaw makes a great fifteen thirty dollar knife. Mm-hmm. Uh, CRKT makes a great twenty five dollar knife. Yeah. Uh, but the edge is not going to hold as long. So, so, so when you talk about edge, it's basically there's different shapes to blades. Yep. There's different grinds to blades. Yep. There are different steels. Grinds meaning? As in the profile, I guess you would call it, of the blade, right? So, so, so got when, you, when you think about a knife, the reason a knife cuts is because they've put it on a, a grinding wheel, and they have honed that edge to be sharp. Mm-hmm. Um so There's different types of edges you can actually create. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And they're for different types of uses as well. We need to point that out. Exactly. So uh, as you use that knife over time, that edge is going to become more and more dull, and you need to rehone it. So a lot of the cheaper knives are using a, a steel called 8CR13. It's a Chinese steel. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people call it alphabet soup steel. But okay. it's, it's lower grade, holds a decent edge. Uh, it's easy to sharpen. And you do find that a lot in the lower priced. You do. That's kind of the go-to steel for a lot of stuff you'd find at uh, your your big back big box stores things like that but there are cheaper steels out there there absolutely are i mean you can buy a four dollar gas station knife that they uh, who yeah. knows exactly. what steel it is and for some folks that's going to be just what they need and it'll serve its purpose for a time yep 
but when it comes down to it, you you, you probably want a better quality steel, yeah. and it's going to have to do with uh, you know how well it holds up to ru- being rust proof. Yep, uh, oils, different things you subject it to. Exactly, and you know it's it's funny um, working at CRKT for two and a half years. I always carried knives with say eight CR13 steel. That's mm-hmm. just kind of what they make in. They're kind of a budget friendly mm-hmm. knife company. Well, you start carrying, I, I recently moved back to Blade HQ, you start carrying a knife with 440C steel or VG10, mm-hmm. uh, and they hold an edge better. Like, you can't mm-hmm. deny it. Um, you start spending more of that. Uh, Shane's holding a paramilitary 2 from Spider Co. With the uh, CPM S30V steel, which yep. is a very, very good steel. Which was developed specifically for knives. Um, I think some people don't realize, like, okay. there's an entire industry of steel makers that only make knife steels. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's specially developed to hold the edge well, uh, the most rust, co- rust resistance that you can get. Um, so it's a, it's a vibrant industry, and it's a lot of fun to see what people come up with. Now, um, the, the knife I carry is also a Spider Co., yeah. and I've, I've chosen to carry this one because I love the ergonomics of the mm-hmm. handle. Um, it has, on the back, it has jimping, which is these fine cuts into the back of the blade, and on the choil, which is um, right near the, the blade edge, has more jimping as well. So I can really kind of choke up on this knife and use it for finer work than maybe some other knives. And I see that this uh, paramilitary has the same same jimping as well, which I really like. Uh, instead of holding further back on the handle, I can choke up and get really good control on this knife. And I also like a knife that has a long handle that that, uh, that my entire hand can get wrapped around, that it's not too small, not too short, not too narrow. And that's one of the reasons I really like these spider coes in particular. There are a lot of great knives, but this is what I one I've chosen to carry my uh, nowadays. Yeah, I, I carry my my typical carry these days is a it's a pretty classic knife. It's called okay. a Benchmade Griptilian. Benchmade's plan, yeah. a company up in uh, Portland. They make only USA made uh, products, and they have a, a lock on here that's ambidextrous, so you can use it with either yep. hand. Um, but just a stellar knife. I think I spent probably about eighty bucks on this one, yep. which is a lot of money for me. I'm a I'm a cheap tight wad. Mm-hmm. But uh, well, bench blades, you're not going to find it, uh, le- anything really less than than seventy eighty bucks. No, right? you're not. But you, you know, it's funny. Just kind of going back to Scott's point, he lost a knife. How many knife yeah. tears do you want to shed for for what you spent? Exactly. On it? Because they do they will get caught on things. They will fall out of your pocket. So you buy like, spend two hundred fifty bucks on a knife and you lose it. Yep. Well, for example, like my survival knife. You know, I've got. Well, I shouldn't say my survival knife. I want my survival knives. I've got three grades. One that I keep on the outside of the pack. Okay. Two that I keep on the inside of the pack. And then those ones, when I get to where I'm going, then I'll strap those on. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't worry about the one on the outside of the pack as much. It's a $40 knife. You know, yeah, $40 isn't cheap, but it's also not high grade. And you're not so I don't worry about it as much. Yeah. Um, it's a great, great way to, my, to choose. Yeah, because I've got, I've got a K-Bar, which I love, but then I've also got a Smith & Wesson version that I got from my brother-in-law that I'm like, I am not losing that because he got that while he was a ranger. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, no, we're going to take care of that one. Yeah, those stay um, at, at home. Those kinds of knives stay at home for me. Well, that stays in the bag. Yeah. Because you know, it's such a good, versatile knife. It's hand, the, the balancing in it is great. Um, I don't envision myself ever getting a situation where I'm having to knife fight, and I hope I never do. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to versatility, it's just a great knife. It's a good handle. It's a good a good weight and, a, and it's a strong blade. That's another co- uh, consideration: is um, the shape of the blade for defensive purposes. Um, typically, you think of maybe a dagger or or something like that, where it's sharp on both sides, and and that's not necessarily always the best defensive knife because it's not going to be very friendly to your everyday uses. Having a blade that's sharpened on both sides, uh, whereas. Uh, this this knife that I carry, it has what's called a, a leaf shape blade, and so it is pointed. And it has a drop a drop point, um, and so it, it comes to a very fine point. So it is a good knife for defensive use, but also for everyday use. You know, the the funny thing, and I don't know what your training is or anything. I have no training in knife fighting, mm-hmm. zero. And uh, kind of what what I've heard from a lot of folks is if you don't have that training, mm-hmm. don't consider your knife a a defensive, exactly. a defensive tool. I mean, I, I, I would imagine that me personally would be much more effective with my fists and my knees and, mm-hmm. like, biting, scratching, running right. away than with a knife. Now, if you go out and get that training, I think more power to you to carry the right knife for the right job. Right. But for me personally, 
no experience. So to me, carrying a knife is having that tool in place mm -hmm. if I need exactly. it for think, everyday tasks. I think that's going to sum up about 95% of the population. 90, five, I'd go 99 on that. Well, I yeah. think 5% have yeah. the misconception that they're like, well, okay. they're either of the... Five percent are there's the smart ones that know what they're doing that have been trained, and then there's the other, probably three percent that are like, oh, this is my my self defense knife. It's yeah. great, you know. Um, every knife has a different type of purpose. Yep. You can repurpose your knife for anything. Like, I love carving when I'm in the mountains. Mm -hmm. I love carving, so I for me I need a smaller blade for that, but I also need a large blade for you know shaping the large wood into the piece that I want to use. Then carve smaller, mm -hmm. and so it makes sense, absolute sense to me to have my large kukri. And then a, a three-inch blade or smaller. Um, in fact, I actually carry a utility knife when I go camping as well because you can't cut as finely with anything else. Yeah, and, and tr imagine trying to, to gut a fish, clean a fish with a kukri. Yeah, not going to work very It's going to happen. Yeah. So, so having, you know, multiple tools of each, um, especially like, like we're talking here, what are you going to use it for? Well, it's like a knife set in your kitchen. Yeah, there you go. Every knife has a different purpose, and so you need to, you need to understand and recognize that. And and when you go looking for a knife, um, think of the different uses that you're using it for. Talk to the salesman. Hopefully, they're a knowledgeable salesman. They can explain what different types of knife blades are, are designed for um, and the different types of cuts, um, the grinds on the blade. Find out what's going to work best for what you're looking for because you may find that you know something may look cool in the, and be amazing and be great, and you're like, yeah, I'm going to spend 90 bucks on this knife, and then realize none of the features about it work for what you're going to use it for. Yeah, I've done that. I've, I've done that. I think we've all done that. Yeah. And it's, it's just part of the learning curve of being an iPhone. Yeah, it, here's one that I, I, I purchased a, a Microtech like this out the front, as you can hear it, um, switchblade type knife. And the steel was LMAX. Mm -hmm. uh, brand new steel, very high end, very expensive steel. I could not sharpen that thing. Yeah. So difficult to sharpen. So taking into adva into account that, okay, this knife was, was very expensive, the steel was very high end, but I couldn't sharpen it well enough. So what good is that tool to me? Exactly. And it and Lost it is utility. exactly, and it's yeah. out. It's now the front knife, so it's it's really more of a defensive knife. It's, it's more a of a. Knife. It, it is a plunging knife. It is, but it's more like oh, cool. Let me let me show you my cool knife. It's it's, it's a switchblade. You know, it's freaking cool. It's kind of a man toy. It is Let's absolutely. Honest, right? <laughs> and and so I, I I was I just don't carry it. You know, it's 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 very cool. I. But I just don't care because I don't want to. I don't want to have to sharpen that thing because it's so difficult to sharpen with traditional means, with you know, with with your traditional stones and so forth, or diamonds and so forth. So, really take into account. Here's another thing I wanted to to say that also Scott brought up is the the aesthetics of the knife. I love the way this knife looks that I that I carry. It is the handle is a it is a this is a a polymer or it's a resin fiberglass filled. Fiberglass reinforced nylon. It's there we it's go. A fancy name for plastic. Plastic. <laughs> yes. It's a but plastic you know, handle, so it's super lightweight. Yeah, it holds up though. It's a, it's a really strong plastic. I, I think plastic has such a a negative mm -hmm. connotation with it, but uh, you know, it holds up great. I, I own a lot of fiberglass reinforced fiberglass nylon, reinforced nylon. nylon. <laughs> uh, knives. And then great. there's polymers as well. So like polymers similar to what handguns are made out of. Yep. Great. Exactly. For the for the grip for the handle instead of like a traditional aluminum or a steel. And we're, we're talking about the frame, the handle of the folding knife itself. Uh, that actually, as you fold the blade back, it it hold it encases the blade. Yeah. Um, and there's all different kinds of materials to choose from as well. And I think that's an absolute factor that the the texture on the on the that grip on the handle, the shape of it, uh, and then also the locking mechanism, like you begin to bring up. Um, the one you're probably familiar with is what is this called? What is this standard lock called? It's here? called a back lock. So it's it's okay. kind of a traditional lock that comes off, uh, basically popularized by the Buck 110. Okay, yes. Uh, like most folks knife. are probably familiar with your your classic Buck knife. So mm -hmm. that's a what's called a back lock or a lock back. And uh, most cases, it's a two handed closer. Exactly. Uh, for me, I, I prefer a one-handed closer just because it makes it a little bit easier. So, for instance, your Spyderco Manix that you're carrying mm -hmm. has a special lock on it from Spyderco that is ambidextrous. You can close it with one hand um, just by flipping it down. So uh, that's a consideration for me, too. When I when I go to buy a knife, how does it open? How does it close? How does it lock and so huh? forth? And, and I... I for me, for an everyday carry knife, it does need to be operated by one hand, both opening and closing. I, I think that's a very important trait for an everyday carry knife. So 
Uh, I know some of these manufacturers tout, okay, our knives are stronger when they're open, like the cold steel, because of this lockback type. And they're probably right. It's probably stronger. But does that really something that's important to me in my everyday carry knife? No, it's not. It's more ease of use, which this may not be the most durable lock, but it's it's good. I would say good enough, or probably better than what I really you know need to use it for every day. Yeah, you know, you know, the funny thing about having a pivot is, anytime you introduce some sort of mechanism into a knife, it's going to weaken it. By having that pivot there, it mm -hmm. means that yeah, your knife is not going to be as strong. Even though, for instance, Cold Steel has their triad lock, which is very strong. It holds up extremely well. They've done a lot of testing on it. Uh, but it's not a fixed blade. Mm -hmm. A fixed blade, right. full-tang fixed blade is one piece of steel. You can't beat one piece of steel if you've got any sort of structural mechanism Absolutely. in there. So, And that's what we're going to talk about after this next break. Yes, we're going to go more into the Bushcraft survival knives, that, which typically are single-tang. Mm -hmm. You know, one solid... One solid piece of steel with a handle wrapped around it, or, or sometimes just the same molding. I've seen uh, railroad spikes turned into pretty cool survival knives. Yeah, you know, and you can do a lot of different things. Um, the key, I think, we're gonna we're gonna hope that you take away from this entire episode is, is there are so many options out there. Um, you got to find out what's right for you. What's going to be the best solution for you and your your pocket. So and, and so you're gonna make some mistakes. So we want to we want to thank Van for being here. We're going to continue with him in just a minute. Before we cut out for this break, we want to just remind you: check out Survival Medical. These guys have the best first aid kit for for long term storage. This is your one stop shop. Check them out. They've got some Father's Day specials going on right now. Go to survival medical dot com. We'll be right back. <laughs> I feel like our music is getting more and more interesting every time. I don't know what you're doing while I'm gone. Same, same music. It just no. As as the show goes on. Oh, I see. Throughout the hour, it's like starts off a little more tame. It's a little more crazy as the show goes on. So, <laughs> hey, you guys are listening to PrepperCon Radio here on K Talk. Uh, K S. It's blah, 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 blah. Yeah. K T K K. K Talk. You can find us at K T K K on uh, Twitter. K Talk Utah on Facebook. You can call in at 801-254-5855, and you can stream everything with our app. Go to k-talk.com. Check out the app. It's pretty dang awesome. You can listen to us anywhere in the world. Actually, a lot of our listeners are out of state, out of country, which is surprising that we have that big of a reach as an AM station. It's pretty awesome. Um, in fact, I the other, day, the other day I was, well, I should say the other day, a month and a half ago I was in Idaho Falls. I could still barely pick up the station. Pocatello, it's a little clear. Um but man, we got we've got pretty good reach here all, all over northern Utah into Idaho. Um, give us a shout out wherever you are. Hop on on social media and let us know where you are on our Facebook page. Um, and in the meantime, check out Survival Medical. You've heard them before. I keep talking about them all the time. Um, that's what I carry in my car. That's what I carry in my bag because I can sit in there and forget about it until I need it. And it'll um, be good. And I don't have to worry about my bandages no longer being ad adherent. I don't have to worry about my alcohol pads being dried up. I don't have to worry about my antibiotic being powder. Um, that's the problem with a lot of the different things you get is is you, you buy it thinking, I'm not going to use it for a while, it's okay. But just those plastic kits that you can buy at Walmart, they, they expire the fastest. The Band-Aids lose their adhesion. So you want to make sure you get a good kit. So check out survival-medical.com. We're here with Ben with Blades HQ, bladehq.com. And we're, uh, we're talking all things knives. Right now we're going to kind of switch gears and talk more about survival knives, um, which is primarily your, your full tang blades. And I guess you can also, of course, get, uh, get to Blade HQ on Facebook as well. You can. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you name it. We're all over it. I wanted to throw in there, too, uh, just on this radio show, we want to do a little promo. If you purchase from Blade HQ and use the code PREPPER cool. at checkout, you get a free schmog. If you're not familiar with what a schmog is, it's basically a scarf that you can use, put it over your head, uh, keep the sun off your head, or use it as a tourniquet, different things. Very but, cool. uh, use prepper, use the code PREPPER at BladeHQ.com, and uh, you can get a free schmog with your order. Very so. cool. Nice. Everybody needs a schmog. They're so versatile. It's almost as versatile a tool as a knife. Absolutely. Wow, I didn't have my mic on. Sorry about that, guys. Hey, I was just saying, everyone needs a schmog. They're so versatile. It's just as versatile as having a knife. Um, you can use it in so many different ways, whether it's first aid, whether it's keeping yourself warmer or cooler, um, providing shade. It's just nice to have. Um, so go get that. 
We've got a caller that actually has questions on knife sharpening, and I think that's a good cool, good yeah, question. Absolutely. Eric, are you there? Yes, gentlemen. When I'm sharpening my knife, you're talking about angles earlier. How do you know what angle you need, and how do you know when you're doing it right? If you're doing it wrong, you'll have to start all over, and then what? Yeah, really good question. Um, so typically knives are ground from the factory, usually about 18 to 20 degrees. So do you know what kind of sharp sharpener you're using? Is it a Spyderco sharpener or stones, or what are you using? Uh, oh, what's the big popular one everybody gets for Christmas and then never opens? Wow, that's a really <laughs> broad question. I have no idea. Uh, there's There's a couple out there. There's like pull-through sharpeners that are not ideal. Uh, Spyderco Sharp Maker is the one I own. It's got two stones at an angle. Uh, Smith's makes some sharpeners. Mm -hmm. Does that ring any bells? Uh, I think so. I'm almost there. Let me, let me look. In transit. Here he goes. One of my favorite things is actually some good oil and a honing stone. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah, a like two-sided stone. One side's rougher, the other side's smoother for your fine edge. But then you can actually match it up with your blade. And what I, I'm of the school that you throw a little a line of of, uh, of graphite on your blade, um, like a pencil. Right. Mm -hmm. You can use a sharpie Every, too. Yeah, you can use a sharpie too. Sharp, actually, that's probably even better yeah. than, than graphite. Um, but you you, col you cover that edge, and then you take a few passes on your stone to see if you're pulling the edge off evenly. If you are, then you know you're at the right angle. If you're not, then you adjust your angle until you get it right, and then you you go to town. Um, and then, you know, if it's two sides of the blade or if it's a single side of the blade, you work it that way. And there are, there's always the debate on, okay, how sharp do I need my, need my knife? Do I need it so sharp that I can shave with it? Or do you just need it functionally sharp? Which, like you're saying, just having a rough side and a finer side is really all that I personally need. Maybe a, a diamond to finish it off or something. Uh, but I don't think, you know, especially with the everyday carry knife or maybe a, a bushcraft or survival knife, you don't need that, that razor sharp sharpness on there. You know what's funny, too, is, and this kind of goes along with the sharpening idea, a lot of folks are sharpening on a regular basis when in reality they could be stropping. Now, stropping, okay. you use a leather belt, mm -hmm. um, and you just hone that edge because you don't need to take a ton of material off to get it back to, yep. to hair shaving sharp. So I, I use a leather belt, old leather belt, and just pull my knife along there at the mm -hmm. angle it's already ground to, uh, sharpened to, and... Uh, a lot of times, that'll take it back to hair popping sharp. One yep. thing that I'll use is, is the ceramic, uh, like the little mm -hmm. Smith's one. Yep. And every once in a while, I'll just make a few passes on that, takes the burrs off of it, and, and yep. keeps it sharp without really removing much material. Do you guys have any recommendations on, like, a YouTube video that, that shows good sharpening techniques? Yeah, I mean, how to sharpen a knife. Uh, look it up on YouTube. We've got a we've got a bunch of videos that we've made on sharpening, um, but there's a there's a ton of them out yeah. there that will get your angles right and that sort of thing. A lot of sharpeners have angles built into them too. Uh, Spider coat sharp makers like that. The Wicked Edge is like that. There's you can you can drop a healthy amount of money on a sharpener sure. as well. But uh, I mean, if you're doing a sharpening stone, I think the Sharpie trick is a good way to do it. Um, I don't know. Did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, I have two of those Smith sharpening kits. One of them's got the angle things that are already set up, and then the other one's the old Boy Scout stone with one. How do you tell when you're when you need the Arkansas stone or the other stone? How do you know when your knife is sharp enough to move to the next level? So typically, the rough the rougher stone, I think that's the Arkansas. Uh, I use that when I've started to divot my my blade. Mm -hmm. Um, otherwise, I use the other side, the smoother side, because um, you're just refining that edge, just keeping it clean. Um, and you don't want to sharp like for me, I sharpen my knife depending on how often I use it, um, every quarter, um, so mm, about, up right. to about four times a year. And sometimes I'll go a half a year without sharpening because I haven't used it that much. But when I start using it all the time, you'll sharpen it more often. Um, and if you're not banging it around, you don't really need to use the Arkansas side at, at all. Um, Unless, of course, you've dropped your blade or, you, you know, something's mm -hmm. happened and you, you've kind of messed up that edge. Um, but look at the edge, you know, look at it in, in good lighting, tw tilt it, twist it, look to see if there's any imperfections and in, in any weaves or, or irreg irregularities in the blade. And that'll tell you if you need to shave more off or if you just need to refine that edge. You can even just refine that edge on the edge of your window. Mm -hmm. um, your car window, the top beveled edge of your car window, you can actually use that as a sharpening yep, it's true. solution, and it works really well. I've actually tested it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. How, how does that work? 
YouTube the video. Yes. Sharpen my knife, or sharpen your knife With on a window. car window. So the window itself has a beveled edge. It's kind of a rounded edge at the top. So it's not terribly critical what angle you hold your knife as you pass it along the edge of that. Similar, you, you would like a diamond stone. You're, you're kind of whittling away with the knife across the top of the edge of your window so that uh-huh. you're taking the burst. It's not, it's not the best, obviously, the best method, but it's a quick way to, to sharpen it up real quick if you, know, if you need it in a pinch. Yeah. Leather belt's going to do better just to keep that edge refined. Mm-hmm. Um, a, a nice old wide leather belt yeah. works best. And it, you'll find, it, it, you watch, um, man, your, your old-time barbershop guys. Oh, yeah. The, you yeah. know, when they're yeah. finding their blade, stropping. they're strapping it. Yeah, they're stropping. Sorry, I keep saying mm-hmm. strapping. It's stropping. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's because it's it's such a good way to keep that edge clean and pristine. Yep. And it's hard to mess that up, too. It is. That's true. Yeah. It is. I can do it. Anyone can do it. That's the key. Does that answer your questions? Yes. Yes, very much so. Awesome. Hey, thanks for calling in. I appreciate you. All right, so I guess uh, on to more of the fixed blades, um, the survival bushcraft. Now, when I think survival knife, you know, I think maybe everybody thinks kind of a Rambo-ish type knife, right? But that's not necessarily what you need for a survival knife, right? Um, What is your ideal size, weight, thickness, material for a survival slash bushcraft type yeah. knife hey, i went through this whole debate oh three or four years ago and you work in a knife shop the way i the way i shop for knives is i put them all on my desk mm. and leave them there for about a week and right. play with them as i work yeah and uh, i settled on an se4 and i actually have it here in the studio i'll just kind of try to describe it to you e-s-e-e is kind of the initials se yeah mm-hmm. e-s-e-e mm-hmm. Um, this is an se4 it's got a powder coat epoxy on it or a, just a powder coating on it so that's going to keep the rust off it. So that was something that was important to me. So it's a um, 1095 steel, which is not a stainless steel. It's, it's a high carbon it's steel. A carbon so I, steel. I do keep a. I just actually just use vegetable oil yeah. on it. So um, yeah, this knife will rust, rust because it's not a stainless steel. So if, even if, like in my basement, which is humid, if if I leave my knives down down there without having a light coat of oil on mm-hmm. it, they will begin to rust just by sitting there. And nothing special. You can put. You can use three in one gun oil. Mm-hmm. You can use. I use vegetable oil just because mm-hmm. it, it's food safe. But you know I. I looked at this one. I think it's a, about a three and a half inch blade mm-hmm. on it. Uh, the handle fits my hand nicely. It's got a micarta. So micarta is basically the grippy material that is layers of fabric that they've glued together. It stays in good shape when you uh, get it wet or mm-hmm. if it gets bloody or whatever. If you're cleaning Still an get animal, a good hold on the knife. But you know, I, I looked at it. This is the knife I keep in my bug out bag. Um, I keep it there simply because it's good for food prep. It's big enough to to prep stuff. It's small enough. Not to be huge or super heavy. Yeah, you could um, you could you could uh, dress if you got a fish with it very easily. It's not too big. Yep. But you could also dress a deer with it. You could absolutely. And, and you could baton wood with it or a rabbit. Yeah. And I, I like to go out and baton. I I've never used this in a survival situation. Uh, but I, I like to take it camping and just beat on it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's fun to baton with. It's full tang, meaning that the piece of steel goes all the way through the knife to the handle. Yeah. Um, and this one, I think, what did I pay for it? About ninety bucks on this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I debated between this one and another one called the the Bob by a company out of Idaho Falls called Tops, mm-hmm. and this Great this company. knife is designed by actually a local here in Utah designer named Mikhail, um, who does tons of bushcraft. It's a beautiful knife. It's got a Scandi grind, which a lot of bushcrafters like the Scandi grind. So if you notice the difference between these two knives, uh, this has basically a flat grind, mm-hmm. and right at the edge, the edge is sharpened. Uh, very, the very tip of the blade. This one has uh, now this the SE4 is like a three sixteenth inch thick steel, so it's f- still fairly thick. Yeah. But the bob is a quarter inch, correct? Uh, you know, I or is it I still? don't think that's a quarter inch. That's okay, it's still three sixteenths like, or so, a little bit thicker, a little thicker than three sixteenths, okay. but it's it's wider all the way yeah. through. It's not, it's it doesn't start edging from the back. It it mm-hmm. goes forward and then edges. Yeah, so a Scandi grind, you you're basically grinding to zero. Mm-hmm. Um, meaning zero degrees. So on a Scandi grind, it's supposed to uh, carve better. It's supposed to be better for detail work. You know, I don't use my knives enough to even... I mean, if it's a big, fat grind, mm-hmm. yeah, it's not going to cut an apple as well right. or things like that. But I don't I don't get into, the, like, the super particulars as much simply because, you know, I'm, a, I'm kind of a casual knife user, to be mm-hmm. honest. I mean, mm-hmm. I carry one every day. I take them camping. 
but uh, I'm not out doing bushcraft on the weekends for fun. That's yeah. just not what I'm into at this point. And, and here's a knife that I picked up. Um, it's called the Mora knife or Mora Kniv, I guess it's the proper out of way Sweden. to say it. Yep. Out of Sweden. And it's a very inexpensive knife. This one, not particularly, but they make a $10 knife in either a carbon steel or in a stainless steel, mm-hmm. correct? And it's it's 10 bucks, and it does have a Scandi grind on there. It's, I mean, it's, it's a, a smaller perfect, standard. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. You don't have to go out and spend $90 on an SE4. You can go and buy or 120 a, or, or 120 or whatever. On this, uh, tops, yeah. You can go out and spend... 10, 15 bucks, throw it in your bug out bag. In fact, sometimes I kind of lament the the quality of gear in my bug out bag that I'm not using on a regular basis because mm-hmm. I like to keep it in there if I ever had mm-hmm. to jump and run. Um, simply it's because a lot of money sitting there. It's a lot of there. money sitting there <laughs> where I could take this, this $15 knife and stick it in there, and chances are, uh, you get had a couple ha- of them. Heaven forbid I have ever have to use it, but if I ever did, mm-hmm. it'd do a great job. Yeah, and you get know? a couple and of them. In the meantime, I can I can enjoy my knife. Yeah, yeah the other absolutely. fun thing with your bug out bag is, uh, or your sending to our kit, but um, when you get to a barter situation, it's always good to have extra knives mm-hmm. because absolutely. people are going to need those. Um, I I love my bag. I've got some more expensive knives and some very cheap knives for that very purpose. I've got probably three junk knives. Um, I call them that because they're between five and ten dollar knives. Mm-hmm. They're great, you know. They they work, but they're not the knives that I choose. The knives that that are my favorites to work with all the time. So, what I what I want what I want you to take away from this today, listeners, is there are so many different types of knives. Find what works for you and what works for what you're trying to accomplish. Get the tool for the job. Um, that's everything we want to focus on with with PrepperCon Radio. All of our shows, we want to make sure you're hel- helping. We're helping you get the tools that you need. For the job, and again, we're sponsored by survival-medical.com. Check them out; they've got some great deals. Thank you, Ben from BladeHQ.com. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely, thanks for having me on.